righty, Drew. So we had some troubling news from 49ers beat reporter Matt Mayoko that George Kittle, star tight end of the 49ers, is on the injury report and has missed two consecutive practices, which if you just go off the history of the 49ers, guys that miss two practices usually don't play that week. So if you're a fantasy owner that happens to have George Kittle on your roster, you have to start thinking about your pivot options. Uh, What does this say about George Kittle throughout the season? Are you concerned that this may be a lingering issue? Not too much. Um, Obviously, Kittle is one of those guys who has concerning issues a lot. And for you as a 49ers fan, I'm sure you you just can't stand it at this point. We (laughs) haven't even played a game. Yeah, (laughs) it seems to be. I mean, you and the uh, Carolina Panthers stands with Christian McCaffrey. You know, it seems like as soon as the season comes closer and closer, it's like, oh, I guess it's time to get injured at this point, you know, but I feel like it's not going to linger on too much. I feel like it might just be, oh, he misses one game and he's back next weekend. So I wouldn't really take a too deep of a dive or look into it. I think it's just going to be kind of a one week. Okay. He's kind of has to sit out and rest the ankle and make sure he's actually physically okay to play the next. What bugs me is this one feels like it came out of nowhere because I was fully expecting the Niners would have their full complement of weapons and this game would be the healthiest that they'd be all season. And George Kittle just randomly appears on the injury report on Wednesday. Yeah. Talk about a hump day. Like we get George Kittle just popping up there two straight days off. Like I said, it it pretty much solidifies that he might not be in this game. And I would also say that I already had red flags on Kittle because one injury concerns and two, what he would be in this new Trey Lance centric offense uh so now i look at the backup options for the niners so let's say you wanted to handcuff him internally ross dwelly is a good tight end someone that i could see taking on kittle's role well in kittle's absence however i don't know what kittle's role is in the trey lance offense so i can't recommend ross dwelly this week um is there any other tight ends you maybe are looking at that might be good replacements. Some of the stands out lower ownership. I'm some that popped up to me is Albert O out of Denver. He goes into Seattle this week. I think that might be a good option, but who else stands out to you? I mean, I like the Albert O option and, and especially too, because I'm looking at players who are, aren't even are low rostered right now. You know, guys like Hayden Hurst going up against Pittsburgh or, you know, Austin Hooper going up against, you know, New York Giants. I know Austin Hooper isn't the most likable guy right now because of his time in Cleveland, but again, you got to take a look at what he did in the years in Atlanta where he was one of the best tight ends in the league. And, you know, could he be back into that situation to where, you know, he becomes one of Tannehill's best options at this point? You know, he can get a lot of touches and, you know, a lot Mm -hmm. of receptions. Uh, You have Brevin Jordan in Houston who might be a good solid option against Indianapolis. Uh, the t- likes of Tyler Conklin or Cameron Brait, there's a couple people who are still pretty available if you look at it because roster percentage for like Austin Hooper is like only like 25 to 29 percent. You know, Hayden Hurst is only around 20 percent. There's a, there should be a couple of these guys you can go and snatch for week one, especially to fill in for George Kittle because, like you said, the man just can't stay healthy for at least a day. <laughs> Yeah, if this turns into a multi-week injury, considering the high draft pick that you put into Kittle, this could be a little bit of a killer as you try and look for replacements. Uh, in week one, another one I'll throw out there is Mo Alley Cox. So yeah. they go against the Houston Texans this week. Sixth worst defense against fantasy tight ends last year, allowing 9.4 points a game. Mo Alley Cox, big body. If you told me he ended up in the end zone, then I could see that as a possibility. So I really just banking on a streamer touchdown dependent option, which unfortunately, again, with Kittle gone, that's really what you're relying on with these backup Mm -hmm. tight ends. You're relying on guys who are just going to be very touchdown dependent. Albert O is going to be touchdown dependent. And Mo Alley Cox is going to be touchdown dependent. Another guy who's like 50% owned that I'll throw out there is going to be Gerald Everett. Now with the Chargers, the Chargers go against the Raiders and the Raiders were the third worst defense against fantasy tight ends last year. Yeah. So Gerald Everett, if he's available, I would say pick him up now, get him on your roster because he might need to be your George Kittle fill in still no determination on if George Kittle is going to actually miss this game, but I think it's good to get ahead of it just in case you get that. O on fantasy morning, it might be helpful to have the big O Albert O 
out of Denver <laughs> or to have Gerald Everett or to have Mo Alley Cox. So Mo and Big O, Mo Alley Cox, just easy way to remember it, guys. Uh, you mentioned a couple options. I don't believe in Ross Dwelly this week. Like I said, uh, Chicago was kind of middle of the pack against fantasy tight ends. And I don't really know what Ross, how many catches Ross Dwelly is going to have, how many targets. I think the Niners are still going to have a mostly run centric offense. And certainly as they try and slow play Trey Lance into the offense, I think yeah. you're not going to see them just zipping it around the field. So Ross Dwelly, I'm going to fade him as Kittle's backup. That, that's kind of how I'm feeling. That's kind of how I'm reading the situation. Anything else to add before we head out on this one, Drew? I did see one that I also kind of like, too, that is most likely also going to be touchdown dependent, too. It could be the likes of an Adam Troutman against Atlanta. Like that? Yeah. Atlanta, again, another defense that is exploitable, or at least has been the last couple of years. Yeah, and Jameis Winston, you know, yeah, he does have Michael Thomas and Jarvis Landry and the likes of Chris Olave, but who knows? He could spread the ball around quite a bit, and, you know, he might be able to find – you know, the Adam Troutman in the end zone and gives you that one little touchdown or something. And one thing that has always been said about Jameis going back to his time at Tampa is he actually was able to use his tight ends in yeah. offense. You did see Cameron Brait have some success. OJ Howard had a little bit of success. So I, I could see Adam Troutman being, again, a touchdown play, like you're saying, as we see what Jameis is in New Orleans, because last year he didn't throw the ball a lot. He had yeah. less than 200 passing yards in each of the games he played up until he tore his ACL. So I, I like Troutman. I think that that's a good option, mostly because I don't believe in the Atlanta defense. So that's kind of like where you're at, guys. I'm sorry. You may be losing out on a guy you drafted with a top five round draft pick in George Kittle, but it's just the way the thing breaks sometimes, particularly if you are a Niners fan. So now you get a little bit of taste of it in the fantasy football community. <laughs> anyway, guys, hopefully some of these streaming options will help you go ahead and pick them up. The widely available guys all around that board from Juju Tox Boards. Andrew Hangabaugh, leave a like on this video, comment below your thoughts, any fantasy football questions, lineup questions you may have, subscribe to the channel, stay safe, happy, and healthy, and we will see you next time.